It is Sunday. It's a nice, beautiful day. So I'm up here because I have to put a lab or get a lab ready for this week. Actually, two labs. One of the things that I want to also do is create stock solutions because that would make it easier for me to set up a lab versus having to each time wanting to do a lab, create this, make those solutions and then prepare everything else for that. So I am gonna get ready to, actually I'm gonna have some lunch first, I'm gonna take Subway, have lunch first and then get ready to do all that. I just finished making the stock solutions of the copper two chloride. I actually made 500 milliliters. That was more than enough. My goggles are fogging up as I sit here and talk to you. And so the original lab that I wanted to do when we came back from spring break, I have a majority of the materials except we are low on filter paper back here in the chemistry wing. And I came in through the back entrance because I have a key to the gate. So if I wanted to go check the biology area, I would have to go into the main building, but the alarm panel is up in the main office. So that meant, means that I would have to walk around the main building, come into the office, cut off the alarm, walk to the back of the building, check the biology wing. If not, or if there was, I still have to go back to the front building, cut on the alarm, walk back around again here and I don't want to do that. I want to enjoy the rest of my Sunday. So what my students are doing is a lab um, reaction, a chemical reaction they've already done before. They're going to place a piece of aluminum foil into a solution of copper two chloride. They're going to get different amounts of foil and um, copper two chloride because they did this when we did the chemical changes lab in the fall semester. However, now that we're doing stoichiometry and limiting reactant, um, they can apply that to the chemical reactions in this lab. And it's just another opportunity for them to do a lab science is chemistry and I want to be able to tie that in because I'm I haven't done as many labs um, as I did compared to when I was in the classroom seven years ago teaching chemistry so I want to make sure that I'm at least getting um, having the students do more lab and getting hands-on experiences so I'm going to clean up the rest of the materials here and I'm going to enjoy the last few hours of my spring break it is 6 42 I just got to campus I'm gonna drop my stuff off in my classroom and then run to, they moved the, the copy machines to, at least one of them to the science wing. So I'm gonna go make some copies for today and then get everything prepped for uh, the lab. First period just ended and I'm a little bit stressed. Things just didn't go according to plan. It's my advisory period right now, so I'm gonna revamp during this period before second period begins. Hopefully I can take care of some issues that we had during the first period so that way it doesn't happen second and fourth and tomorrow. It's 5.09. I stayed to do part of the lab that my students didn't get to finish, so they needed some data, or they will need data for the next class period. Uh, they're to say the least, I was frustrated all day today, but I don't really want to talk about that right now. I will talk about it tomorrow. I'm just going to go home and get some rest and calm down. Tuesday morning. So yesterday I was frustrated all day, mainly at myself because this is my second year back in the classroom teaching and my first year teaching chemistry in over seven years. And back then when in the fall semester, I would do, I would have my students do a lot of labs because one of the things that I noticed when I first began teaching, and this is also reflective of my experience as a high school student and then first year college student when I start, was in college, was that my students and myself included were so cognitively focused on getting through the lab that learning really wasn't taking place because the students and myself included were trying not to break the equipment, trying not to get injured. And so oftentimes this was just a, real, a focus on just getting through the lab. 
Um, and so I would try to do a whole bunch of lab experiences in the fall semester so they can build their lab skills. And if I told them to set something up, they knew how to set it up. They didn't need my help. So by the time spring semester came along, I can engage in more complex lab, lab setups, um, do inqu full on inquiry where I'm just like, I gave you a question and I'm not gonna tell you the procedures or the, the equipment, you have to figure that out. So by the time the spring semester would come along, they would be at least okay and confident. However, I didn't do a lot of labs or as many labs as compared to when I was last in the classroom this year. And so it's showing this semester because students are asking me questions. And again, that's my fault because some of the lab stuff we did in isolation and months went by before we had to do that same skill again. So it's understandable that students may have forgotten how to do a certain thing or set something up because I didn't have them work on that particular skill throughout um, the semester. So that showed, it showed up in some of the other labs this semester, but I think it just finally got to me yesterday with my 8A classes. Also, I was a little bit frustrated because some of them just weren't reading instructions, so we get to this part where it's like, I don't know what to do, and they're like asking me questions, and, and I ask them, well, did you read something? And then I come over and I have them read it to me, and then they're like, oh, oh. Or like some, some students, will they will ask me a question, but instead of trying to think together or ask another group, which I always promote, they'll, they want to take the easy way out and they'll ask me a question and if I don't just give them what they want, they get mad at me because usually my response is, well, tell me what you think, what your process is, how would you go about doing it? Well, that's why I'm asking you. So I get that, those retorts <laughs> to me. So just after first period, I, I switched it up a little bit for second period. It went better than first period, but there were still some issues. So then I switched it up fourth period. It went better than first and second period, but there were still some issues. So I'm actually revamping what I'm, I'm gonna still do the lab today, but we're gonna actually do it first before I, we do some notes because that's what I did yesterday um, for all four periods or all three periods is we did the notes first and then we did the lab towards um, the middle and into the end of the period. So I'm gonna flip it, do the lab first, so that way we don't run out of time and then it's okay if we run out of time in, in regard to getting to the notes because I can always, at least for my B-Day classes, pick up on Thursday with that. So I have two more minutes before my advisory class starts, so I'm gonna get ready for that. And um, hopefully six and seven period go a lot better than yesterday. It is 4.44, today went a lot smoother, but um, I left my charger at home and my battery is going to die in a few, so I will talk about it tomorrow. There were some things that I still need to work on, but it went a lot smoother than yesterday, so I'm pretty pleased about that. vinegar for my students because I'm scrapping the lab that we're originally going to do and we're going to do um, a repeat of the lab that we did to review for the test that's coming up next week. It is 6.49. I'm actually going to head into the main building first to make copies of the lab slash review and then I'm going to head back to my car to grab all the stuff that I left in there. So it's 7.14, I'm done battling that evil copy machine, um, and I'm actually glad that I stopped off at HEB because we only had one drug back here in the prep room, and so I grabbed three drugs for today. 
So, like, I can't believe this completely slipped my mind. As, as I was driving on my way to work, I remembered. I'm laughing because um, I had to do some something as part of my master's thesis. And I don't know, like, why I didn't tie it into. However, yesterday I was talking about the fact that in the fall semester, my students, they would do a bunch of labs. So that way, that would build their confidence in the lab skills. By the time they got to spring semester, they would be good to go. And I can't believe that I forgot the fact that part of the reason why we did so many labs is because I would often make students repeat a lab. Sometimes we would do multiple trials in a day. Sometimes we would do the lab the next day, um, a couple weeks later, if I was able to effectively tie it into the concept, not just doing a lab um, in isolation that wasn't connected to something. There were times we would do an activity before content, ABC, so they would do the, the activity the very first thing. Then they, if there was some downtime, like they had to wait for a reaction to take place, they'd come back to the classroom and we would take some notes. Um, or even if um, you know the lab finished, we'd come back and take some notes. Now they had some prior knowledge. And then I would send them back, do it again. <clears throat> because at that point, it's like, okay, can you revise anything? You know, did anything now? Did you notice anything the first time? Go back and see maybe if your thought process changed or maybe your results might change because of the information that I've given you. As part of my master's thesis, I had to, um, which was the, the effectiveness of repeated instruction on the academic achievement of English language learners. And it just didn't apply to English language learners, but I'm laughing because part of the project, we had to incorporate an art component. And I remember thinking when the professor said that, like, why am I having to incorporate art into this? This makes no sense. So as I was like writing all that and working on that project, I came across, and I was struggling to write, you know, come up with like the art piece. I came across this event called Through the World here in Austin, but it's not just the Austin event, it's a worldwide event where people dance at the same time to Michael Jackson's Thriller around Halloween time. So I was like, this is great because I have to learn how to dance this. And so as I'm learning, I have to repeat the movements or you know practice over and over again. And that will help me eventually when it came down to dancing on the big day. So I found this one, this dance instructor's, instructor's videos on YouTube and there were like 42 of them. And I sat there and rewind you know, the video and practice all the, you know, the moves. Now to this day, I can dance to Michael Jackson's Thriller. And there's actually videos on YouTube because there was about a hundred of us here in Austin that danced to it and a company uploaded it to YouTube. But I guess where I'm going with that is, and I didn't even need that experience to, to teach me that because it's just human nature. When we repeat things over and over again, we get better at doing them. So I often um, would have my students repeat things because I, oft I noticed that my students at the beginning were at least talking to other science teachers when I first started teaching is that oftentimes they would do a lab and then they would move on. And my students would struggle with that because they, would, they were just focused on getting to the lab that they weren't really paying attention to the science that was taking place. So through making them do a lab more than once, they got better and they were also now able to focus on the lab the second or third time around. So I don't know why I forgot that. Like I just checked out this year with a variety of different things. Um, but yeah, I had to dance to Michael Jackson's Thriller and I can do it now, even though I haven't actually physically danced it in many years. I practice so much that it's like embedded in, in my head. With that said, I'm going to clean up this lab table here in the middle and I'm gonna get ready for the school day. It's gonna be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is 10:10 10, 10, Thursday, March 22nd. So I realized I didn't talk about my B day classes compared to uh, on Tuesday compared to Monday with my A day classes. So as I said earlier on that I was going to switch. So we did the lab first and there was a period of 10 to 15 minutes where they had to wait for the reaction to complete. So all the students came back to the classroom and um, they took some notes over that. Then they went back and they finished. But at that point they were able to effectively tie everything in. And that seemed to work a lot better than what I tried to implement on A day. And I also think that's what triggered um, my memory of how I used to do things back in the past when I was teaching chemistry before I left because Thursday evening and on my way to work on Wednesday, um, I started to remember, yeah, we used to do a whole bunch of labs and then we would do activity before content or at least when they had to wait, we'd come back into the classroom, take some notes, they'd go back and do some stuff. And just based off 
how that went on Tuesday, um, it was just a lot better. And I think, again, that's what triggered my memory. So today my B-Day classes, they're doing what my A-Day classes did yesterday. They're doing a lab um, that's reviewing and effectively tying in all the concepts. I had an original lab planned, another lab planned, but I scrapped it because it just, I felt like it didn't tie in everything. And it was just focused on one concept compared to this repeat lab that they've done before. It's going to tie everything in. So I'm going to get ready because I have about um, 20 more minutes before my advisory starts. I'm going to get ready for the rest of my day. TGIF, it is 536. I'm going to get ready to head home in a few minutes, but I have some students stay for tutoring. Um, I don't know if you can see up on the board, but it's helping them. They wanted me to just throw problems, like practice problems at them, even though I put a review on our Canvas site. Um, my B-Day classes, they did a mini lab today. It was a repeat of a lab they did in the fall. Then it was a review, and I was able to tie in concepts into the mini lab. They take their test on Tuesday. My ADA classes, they will review slash do mini lab on Monday, take their test on Wednesday. Um, and it's just testing, testing season at this point because in two weeks, students, if they're in English 2, they will take the English 2 end of course exam. I have to get my SLO post test before April 20th. And then um, depending on if they're in US history or algebra 2, they will have to take an end of course exam in that. Then I also have a lot of students in AP courses, which happens to also be around the time that the EOC courses in May are in. So it's just, it feels like it's test, 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 test. So it's just a crazy time of the year. And then the school year is almost over. The, the fifth, six weeks ends next week, and then we're in the last grading period of the school year. I'm gonna get the rest of my stuff, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my weekend. So I hope you have a great weekend as well. Well, that's it. If there was anything about this video that you liked, then make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and or share the video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe so that way you can bond with James. And if you're interested in checking out some of my other vlogs, you can do so by clicking on any of the links right here. As always, thanks for watching.